how partnering with Akamai is helping you also scale? What we bring is the tech and the, the knowledge and the community of, uh, of people that have embraced open source, that have embraced API gateways and API management. And what Akamai brings is the, uh, the, the extensive network, the architecture. They have a very distributed architecture of the core and the, the thousands of pops that they have. So this is why this partnership makes a lot of sense because as Akamai brings more customers to run their AI models on the Akamai cloud, traffic comes in and helps secure those AI models, exposes them as APIs, and gives them that control in the governance layer. Hi, this is your Sapin Bhartiya, and we are here at KubeCon and Cloud Native Con in London. And we have with us once again Sudeep Goswami, CEO of Traffic Labs. Sudeep, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, great to see you again, Sapnil. It's my pleasure. We are here at KubeCon, and the reason we are talking again is uh, a lot of work that you folks are doing with Akamai, a, a lot of discussion you deliver, a lot of talks about a scalable and responsible AI interesting. We'll talk all about that, but before that, just quickly remind viewers. What is Traffic Labs all about in the context of the discussion we are having today? Yeah, Traffic Labs is a company that provides the essential building blocks to enterprises who, is who are deploying AI and API infrastructure. So what that really means is we provide critical building blocks such as an application proxy, an API gateway, an AI gateway, and the full API management lifecycle. Now I also want to talk about what do you mean by scalable and responsible AI inferencing? Yeah, let me break it down. So let's start with scalable AI. What's happening right now in the industry as, as enterprises are trying to bring AI in-house, it's a lot about running these inference models on-prem. You know, that on-prem could be in their data center, it could be on cloud. Like in this case, you know, they're running on uh, the AI models on Akamai Cloud. The scalable part comes into play is how do you do this at scale across the Akamai cloud and for certain AI models and the certain kind of questions that you're asking the AI model, if there's already a response that comes back and then somebody asks a similar question again, you don't need to go and run the costly CPU and GPU cycles. You should be able to get that answer from a cache. So that's what we have actually introduced is the semantic caching as a functionality that allows you to scale this thing with the right cost footprint and actually deploy this caching throughout the network. So like in places where you can't even run GPUs, like let's talk about the edge, you can now bring that intelligence and push it all the way to the edge. So this is the scalable part of AI. Going to the second part, which is about responsible AI, it's really about controlling the inputs and outputs of data going into and out of the models. So for example, PII is a big topic of discussion. Privacy is a big topic. When you are feeding data into an AI model, not all data are the same. Like if you have sensitive data, you don't want to bring that into the model. So there are technologies that we have launched this week. It's called Content Guard that allows the administrators, the admins, to put in policies that can redact certain type of data that's going in, or in some cases it can block the entire request because it has so much sensitive data. For example, if you're sending your personal in email address into the AI model and asking a question about your personal email address, you can block that as a policy. Conversely, if the AI model is spitting out sensitive company information, like let's say critical customer data, uh, credit card information, personal, other personal information, you can actually mask all of that from being seen by the user. So this is where AI at the enterprise level is all about scaling now, and it's all about doing it in a controlled fashion and a responsible fashion. And what are the use cases of, uh, I mean, scalable is quite understood, everybody wants for responsible AI. Now, there are two different things, you know, when we are using things like open AI, when they say we have to trust, and then a lot of folks have run tests that they told them, don't put anything in the memory, but I was reading, you know, somebody authored a, a book and they published it and they told them, they said, 
it and it told very clearly don't put anything more but next time he entered all the data and it came up with the, the name of the author which should not have been the case so talk about the use cases of course enterprise use cases are different in that case but what are the specific use cases where responsible ai i mean we love to talk about that but i'm talking about the realistic use cases yeah so there are uh, there are probably a many layers to this what's happened uh, first is uh, to your point, when uh, customers say they don't trust what's in running in the public LLM, so the public cloud, the first step that they have done is bring some of those models in-house so they can run it in a controlled, kind of like a walled garden, so to speak. So that really allows them to keep all the data that are putting into the LLM model to stay in their walled garden. That's step one. But maybe that's not enough because you don't know what the LLM, what the model actually holds, what kind of sensitive data it holds, which is where the second level of responsible AI comes in, which is what we're offering is, even if it's running in your wall garden, you still want to control what data goes into the model and what data comes out of the model. So it's like another layer of protection that you're putting in. So let's take an example where a law firm is uh, turning all of their documents and all of their knowledge into a database, and they're using the AI to train it, and now others can start asking questions about previous cases and, and similar things and so forth. Yeah, it's all running in a control in a walled garden, but still, you don't want the AI model to give out some accidentally some sensitive information about another case, and this is where the second layer of filtering is so important. And so trust but verify, trust but have controls in place so when things don't go as planned, you have an additional layer of protection. And where does Traffic Lab enter into this layering? So we are providing the AI gateway component of it. So we've become the guardrail of anything going in and out of these AI models. And therefore, we can put that layer of control, governance, security, and uh, can you also talk about, the tra because I have been covering Traffic Lab since early days, you know, that this evolution, back in those days, traffic, you folks are doing, you know, but everybody's evolving as the market is evolving. So talk about your own trajectory with the evolution of the market, because now everybody is talking only about AI. Yeah. So what's happening is um, the world of AI and the world of APIs are blending together because the AI models are being exposed and consumed as APIs. So the more AI models, the more APIs. The more APIs, more API management. So we have already been in the space of API and API management. Now with AI, it becomes a huge tailwind for enterprises to deal with more APIs and more API management. So it's not a, a fork or it's not a, a diversion, but it's almost like a natural evolution of APIs and API management but from an AI perspective, it brings new challenges. And I think from a traffic lapse perspective, we have all the right building blocks, which is what allowed us to move fast and introduce an AI gateway, which is really a specialized case of our API gateway that we've already had. Lots and lots of customers are using that in production. And we introduced the AI version of it and also integrated all the API infrastructure that we've already built. So it was a very quick thing for us to do, and we're showcasing that with partners like Akamai. Yeah, and that very good segue. That's what I was heading to. So talk about how partnering with Akamai is helping you also scale. Yeah. So you know what we bring is the tech, and the the knowledge, and the community of uh, of people that have embraced open source, that have embraced API gateways and API management. And what Akamai brings is the, uh, the, the extensive network, the architecture. They have a very distributed architecture of the core and the, the thousands of pops that they have. So this is why this partnership makes a lot of sense because as Akamai brings more customers to run their AI models on the Akamai cloud, traffic comes in and helps secure those AI models, exposes them as APIs, and gives them that control in the governance layer. Can you talk about the, the the structure of this official partnership? So kind of working through some of the, the, the details behind it, but, but in essence, uh, it's going to be a joint partnership where uh, we would work closely with Akamai 
and uh, and help our customers deploy these uh, these technologies. So is it more for uh, my customers leverage uh, traffic labs or is it more for traffic lab customers? Uh, uh, you know, take uh, both ways. It. It's going to be both ways because what we have built is very uh, agnostic. So if our existing customers want to leverage Akamai Cloud, absolutely they can because we're built on a cloud native and a cube native foundation. And Akamai has a great uh, Kubernetes uh, engine called LKE that came from the Linode acquisition. So the fact that we're cube native, we seamlessly integrate into LKE. So if we have other customers that are using other Kubernetes distribution, they can seamlessly migrate to the Akamai Kubernetes distribution. So for uh, traffic lab customers, how does that offer you? I'm just trying to understand, you know, your offering service. And also, is this partnership? So what I'm trying to understand is that when we look at a traffic lab customer, they don't see that it is through Akamai. Or it is like you are working with Akamai and you might work with someone else. You know what I'm question is? Yeah, so what we are offering is choice to a customer. Mm. We are uh, offering them these critical building blocks for AI and API infrastructure, and we're giving them the choice to run it in their environment. The reality is it's not a one cloud world. It is a hybrid cloud, also on-prem, like the hybrid multi-cloud on-prem world. And so edge that, also is there. And there's the edge. So customers are figuring out which workloads make sense to run in which environment. And what's nice about Traffic Labs is we provide the infrastructure that is agnostic to those environments. So that you can run them in multiple different places, depending on the use cases and the needs. And since now we are talking about hyperscalers, public cloud, we are living in a kind of complicated geopolitical scenario. Uh, so when we look at Responsible AI is not just about companies trying or sensitive like law firm, whatever. It is also becoming a global challenge that you know Sweden, Denmark, Germany, France, they want to. I mean, I'm not talking about the move data, but this. So, what do you see the scope of this partnership in those use cases? Yeah, I think what this does is gives people, uh, gives customers an on ramp and an off ramp. So depending on the geo, they can get on it quickly, but they can also get off of it quickly because what they have done is, uh, and what traffic is providing is that abstraction layer. So you're not tightly coupled to the environment. You are decoupled from it. So at any given point, if you want to off-ramp from it and go to another environment, you can do so. Again, being cloud native, cube native as the foundation. So Deep, once again, thank you so much for joining me. And of course, give us an update on this partnership between Akamai and traffic like, and also I love the whole insight on the scalable and responsible AI. So thanks for sharing those insights as well. And as usual, I would love to have you on the show again. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Swapnil.